super low mortgage rates. With the mortgage rates dropping, you're probably wondering, should I go and refinance? Is it a good idea? What are the pros and cons? So in this video, we're gonna go and expand and dive upon, is it a good idea to refinance right now with the mortgage rates dropping? What are the consequences? And I'll share why you probably don't want to refinance, but instead I have another strategy for you guys that would actually save you more money in the long haul and get to pay off your mortgage even quicker. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok brothers. And as you know, the mortgage rates are dropping very, very low. And some may argue that we've hit the lowest point in the history when it comes to mortgage rates and refinance rates. And thus you're probably wondering, should I go and refinance my mortgage to a lower rate? But in this video, I'm gonna show exactly why you want to reconsider refinancing even to a lower rate. And I'll show exactly why you might actually end up paying more when you refinance and why it could hurt you in the long term. But before we do, be sure to subscribe to our channel channel if you want to learn more about paying off your mortgage faster, saving money on interest, as well as investing in real estate. So as we've all noticed, the mortgage rates have been dropping and you might be considering refinancing right now. So I'm going to show you exactly what happens if you refinance your existing mortgage on your home. So I want to begin by drawing out what's called an amortization chart. Now this chart is a relationship between how many years you spend on paying off your mortgage. So typically, right now, most people get a 30 year mortgage, okay? So right here represents the end of your mortgage term and this right here represents the beginning of your mortgage. So if you just got your mortgage today, you're gonna be right here at zero year mark. Now this vertical line represents the amount of your monthly payment for your mortgage. So let's say for the sake of this example, your monthly payment on your mortgage is $1,000 a month. Nice and even, right? Now out of the $1,000 monthly payment for your mortgage, a portion of it goes to your interest and the other portion goes to principal. Now on the earlier parts of your mortgage, vast majority of your monthly payment goes to paying the interest, not the principal. So this red line that I'm drawing here represents the amount of interest that you'll pay over time, over the period of 30 years. Now this blue line, actually let me label that as interest. And this blue line here represents the approximate portion of your monthly payment for principal. So as you can see, vast majority of your monthly payment towards the beginning part of your mortgage is going towards uh, interest. So this is just an estimate based on maybe three to 5% interest rate on your mortgage. So on that $1,000, probably $800 of that is going towards interest and only about 200 of it is going towards the principal payment that actually reduces the loan amount. So you can see here that if you just refinance or you just got your mortgage, vast majority of the payment that you're making to the bank is going towards interest at the moment. It is only when you get to about 15 to 30 year mark, the second half of your 30 year mortgage is when you actually start to pay the loan down the principal portion of your mortgage, which is what you want at the end of the day. The more principal you pay off, the more equity that you build, the more net worth you build for your property. And also paying down your principal on your mortgage could also mean, you know, more breathing room to go and smash the like button on this video for our YouTube algorithm. Now the problem is if you made it to about this part here, maybe seven to 10 year mark, let's say you've been making your payments faithfully for the last seven to 10 years. Well, the problem is you made it this far into the amortization where you're starting to make more payments on the principal. But the problem is if you refinance, even at a lower rate, you have to start all over from the beginning of the amortization schedules, where vast of your monthly payment is going towards the interest, not the principal. So even if you were to refinance at a low rate, you would start all lower than the beginning of the amortization schedule. Now this portion right here, guys, where vast of your monthly payment is going towards the interest, it's called a front-loaded interest zone mainly because all the interest is loaded in the front of your mortgage, the beginning part of your mortgage. Now you might be saying, Sam, what if I refinance into a 25-year or 20-year term where I'm resuming my amortization progress. So even so, you're still going to go to the front loaded interest zone because the way that the amortization mathematics works is that you're always going to be paying more interest towards the earlier part of your mortgage than you are in the latter part of your mortgage. So in all reality, if you are considering refinancing right now, do consider the fact that you're going to restart all over for the beginning of the amortization schedule if you choose to go and refinance. So you're probably better off staying at where you are if you made it to seven to 10 year mark on your mortgage because as you continue to make that payment, you're paying picking up more principal along the line, which means again, more equity and more net worth you're building. 
And if that's not a reason enough for you to reconsider refinancing, you also have to pay closing costs that are associated with refinancing the mortgage. So closing costs like administrative fees, appraisal fees, underwriting fees, title fees, there's so many different fees that are associated with refinancing just so that you can go and recycle back into the front part of your mortgage amortization schedule. So, and many times I interview homeowners that just recently refinanced and they're paying a closing cost of anywhere between $3,000 to $10,000 just so that they can get a low rate, but unfortunately they didn't quite understand that they're gonna be starting all over back into the front loaded interest zone to the beginning of the amortization schedule like I've drawn out right here. So bottom line, you might be asking, Sam, what can we do to save money on our interest? How can we pay off our mortgage faster, right? So I do have another strategy where it involves not refinancing and allows you to pay off your mortgage faster. It allows you to potentially save a lot of money on interest and gives you flexibility as well as a safety net in cases of a recession or you lose your job or your income Income goes down. So I'm gonna go ahead and point you guys to another video that I made that shows exactly how this strategy works, how fast you can pay off your mortgage, and how much money you can potentially save using this very strategy. And like I mentioned, the strategy can actually help you during a recessionary times, or maybe we see another coronavirus pandemic where your income goes down, or you completely lose your income. This strategy can actually provide you safety net, as well as some flexibility in case something bad would happen to the economy. So that video is down below in the video description below, and I'm also gonna leave that in the comment section so that you can go and click on it. It's another YouTube video. I'm gonna explain exactly how the strategy works. So definitely go and check out that video where I'm gonna explain the strategy, how you can pay off your mortgage faster, save money, and give you flexibility. And there's some people, as you can see on the screen, that use this strategy to pay off their mortgage even faster. So definitely go and check out the video where you don't have to refinance, go back to the front-loaded interest zone, and start all over again with the amortization schedule. So don't get easily fooled by the lower interest rate and jump right into refinancing, do consider the repercussion and the consequences of refinancing your existing mortgage because as you can see, it may cost you even more money over time if you choose to go and refinance into another 30-year mortgage. So like I said, for the millionth time, go and check out the video where I explain the strategy and paying down your mortgage. I'll see you guys over there in the video.